Hello and welcome to Scott Grows an Avocado Tree. On Scott Grows an Avocado Tree, I aim to grow an avocado tree from seed and document the process. And sometimes I branch out into other planty things. And today is going to be one of the latter. Pam from Pammy's Planty Things has come up with the idea of the 2020 Under 20, where a number of us plant tubers are going to be going out into the world and uh, trying to get a plant for less than $20 and we will be posting it all on the same day, that is today, if you're watching it the day this is released, on the 20th of February, 2020. Now, I am going to be trying to make a terrarium for under 20 Australian dollars. I'm not gonna be counting the cost of the stones and the soil and things, I've already got them in a bigger batches at home. So we're gonna be trying to find a container and a plant for under 20 Australian dollars. We've got some shopping to do, let's go. <music> I know it doesn't really look like it at the moment. Um, it doesn't look like I've really changed location. I'm still in my car. I've, I've driven now though. And I am at the shopping center where I'm hopefully going to track down a container for an open terrarium. Let's go inside and have a look. So I'm speaking very quietly because I feel really uncomfortable about filming in public. This is a very cheap uh, container. That'll do. So I'm going to uh, see how this goes for $3. Alright, so I'm back in the car and I've got my mini greenhouse egg uh, from Kmart. And I'm just going to open it up to, to give it, get an idea of what we're actually working with. So the one I go to Bunnings, I know exactly how big. So we've got, oh, so we've got part of it. Okay, this is like a big drinking glass with uh, an awful bottom for drinking. And um, ooh, I've got a, and I've got the base there. So I should just slot on like that. So. I'm gonna need a pretty small plant, anything that will fit inside this kind of glass thing here, this base. Um, so not a lot of roots, that's fine. And then, no, so, but we can have a bit of height though. So that's actually gonna be a, uh, a closed environment. There's no holes. Um, I mean, there'll be a little bit of air getting it out of from that because it's not sealed, but uh, there we go. Um, for $3, and uh, it doesn't look like there's any scratches either, which is nice. So three dollars. Um, so I've still got very well money, well spent, I think. And I've still got seventeen dollars left in the budget. So I'm gonna not break those as I pop them back in there. And we're going to now drive to one of my favourite shops in the world, Bunnies. I'm having second thoughts now. Everything on this stand is ten dollars. Oh, some very nice plants through here. The fears through there. So anything under seventeen dollars that will fit in my terrarium is fair game. It's, it's too big. All right, so all of these are five dollars fifty, and these would be perfect. And I'm really in, look at liking the uh, yeah, look of this Syngonia Maria, and so I think that'll be the perfect thing for the terrarium which leaves me with uh, still $11.50 to work with. Hmm, where am I going now? <laughs> it's a pot for it. I think this size should be right, $2.10. That'll bring us slightly over budget, but for two containers for just over 20 Australian dollars, that's not bad. All right, I'm gonna get a couple of sauces as well because I need some, and uh, then we're gonna go. I'm feeling pretty good about this now. So for the egg, the Syngonium, the Calithia, the pot, and one of the sauces. I bought two sauces, but I'm just counting one for this one because the other one, that's for an avocado tree. Uh, the total was $22.17, so we're $2.17 over budget. But considering we've got two, um, two containered plants, 
I'm pretty happy with that. And um, I decided to celebrate by, um, well, it's also time to eat, so I got a sausage as well. It's a bit of a, an Australian um, uh, institution by now, the Bunnings sausage. I, uh, I got back to my car and realised I hadn't got sauce, but it's raining, so I'm just going to eat it like it is. And I suppose this is now where I become one of those people who review food in their cars, so um, I'm just going to eat this. Mmm. Mmm. Always very good. I'm going to finish this sausage now, uh, drive home, and we're going to pop these up. Okay, I'm home now with all of the things that I bought when I went shopping, and I'm going to start potting these up now. I've also got um, in here uh, a some potting mix and some sand. I'm going to be using these a little bit later. And I've also got a box of tricks, which I'll be using uh, for the terrarium side of things. So I'm going to do the terrarium last. I'll do the Clithia peacock first. It's a, it's a beautiful specimen, really shiny leaves. Uh, I'm very excited to be uh, to have brought this one home. So I'm going to set aside the, uh, the things for the terrarium. Uh, don't mind our avocado tree here. And I'm just going to start with the Clithia. I'm going to take off the labels from the pot because we don't need those anymore. And I'm not going to need too much more soil actually, so uh, that's fine, but I will need a little bit more and I'm going to mix that up now. So for, I, I just use a really cheap potty mix. Generally, um, it's it, it's just very cheap and I find that I need to add a little bit of drainage to it. I, I'm not adding any fertilizer to this one, I have a liquid fertilizer uh, when I do my liquid fertilizing. Um, so I'm going to just add uh, some of this sand. Spoons are really good tiny shovels. So I'm going to use spoons a little bit today instead of a trowel. So I'm going to add a fair amount of sand into this just to make sure that it's draining really well. So it's probably not quite a fifth that's in there now. I'm gonna add a little bit more. And I'll leave the rest for a bit later. And I'm just going to, just like a mixing bowl, stir it in. Okay. That's looking pretty good now. I am going to spoon a bit just into the bottom about where I think the depth of this pot will go so I'll add I don't know seven or eight centimeters of it just into the bottom there it's very much like baking this isn't it a little bit more there we go and now I'm going to pot up the clothia so I'm just gonna give the pot a squeeze and hopefully I don't get too much off this placement off the table on the floor. You see? And give the roots a little bit of a tickle so that they decide so that they wanna spread out throughout the pot and that's pretty good. Now I'm gonna fill it with the rest of this mix. I'm gonna make a tremendous mess today. So usually I do all my potting outside, but it's raining today. And so that would make probably a less good video. Okay. And I will be watering this very, very shortly. Um, outside, but that is uh, pretty well it for the Calithia. So I'll um, try and get as much of that soil back on top as I can. Uh, I am making quite a mess here today, and that is okay. All right, I'm gonna set this one aside now, and we're gonna move on to the terrarium, which is Kind of the, the, the thing I started out, set out today to do, um, and I'm quite excited to do it. So I hope you don't mind this mess here on the table. I don't mind it, so I'm gonna leave it. So we're going to get out our mini greenhouse egg. Here's the top, which is, uh, well, it's got a bit of height to it. And the base. 
And we're going to want to get some layers going in here, I think. And I'll explain what I mean by that in a minute. So that's pretty well perfect. So I will be able to plant that one pretty well straight in there without too many issues. My plan for this is that we'll have a couple of layers going around the bottom. So I might have some sand at the bottom, uh, followed by some pebbles, maybe some sphagnum moss soil. Uh, we just want to get a few different layers going because that makes things look interesting. Uh, and it only really needs to be the outside edge because we will have the plant in the middle, of course. So I am going to actually start, I'll, I will start off with the base layer, which I'm just going to throw a little bit of sand in there. And I'm going to use a teaspoon for this one instead of my fingers. I'm not sure why I went straight to the fingers. Now this is not any special sand in particular. I know you can get horticultural sand, um, but this is just playground sand. So I'm ho I, I don't believe there's any nutrients which will affect the growth or anything. Um, and I just want to be nice and level there. Beautiful. And so you can see here. So I've just got a little layer of sand at the bottom there. I think I'm going to add some pebbles now. So I'm going to add, and I've got some black pebbles and white pebbles. I think so we get that juxtaposition. I'm going to add a small layer of black pebbles. So I'm going to pull them out of my box of tricks and just add just a layer of pebbles. And I am going to completely cover the base there. Which I know it's going to be really hard to see on camera. And I've only got one camera going today because the other camera, the second camera that I usually use, is busy. And um, if you've been following my Instagram, you may have had some clues into that. So I've covered the base there. And next I am going to, actually because that's black, I'm going to throw in a little bit of activated charcoal horticultural charcoal, should I say. Um, and the reason why I'm adding this to my terrarium is in case things get smelly, because this is so porous, it's really good at absorbing smell. Um, so I'm going to just put a couple of bits, I don't need much, just in the very middle. I don't really need to see that. And if I can make it any smaller, not today, that's all right. That should be fine. Okay, I would like now a layer of sphagnum moss, which is really good at separating actually, so separating so that the soil eventually doesn't uh, fall through and cloudy up the sand at the bottom, because I'd really like to keep that as a nice uh, sand color and not dirty sand. So uh, that, and that will compact quite a bit uh, when I, put the rest of the soil in. I think that that's probably going to be enough layering for the moment. It's not a very deep dish. Some of the terrariums that I've made are much deeper and so I can afford to have a few different layers going but I don't have that today so I'm going to leave that there and now we're going to put in the syngonium. Try and get the root canopy to go a little wider this time because I have, and I'll switch it in there. And I almost don't need to add any other soil to this one, but I do need to add a little bit. So I'll make sure that's nice and centered. Beautiful. And then I'm going to add a little bit more of our quick draining potting mix here. So it doesn't quite have the dark colour that the, uh, the potting mix that came in did, but it doesn't really matter too much. We'll have a few flakes of sand uh, of light colour in amongst the, the darkness of the potting mix. 
and that's okay. I'll try to avoid any big bits of bark. As I said, this is a, a cheap potting mix that I'm using and I haven't sieved it. So I could have done that, but I haven't today. And that's okay. All right. So I'm pretty, just about level with the top of the container there. Let me move this pot so that you can see it. So I'm getting pretty close to being level with the top of that. So I'm just gonna, you know, I don't want to go over the top of that lip. So I'm gonna compact it a little bit now. And there is a little bit of a mound in the middle and that's kind of the look I'm going for. Now, I'm going to do my final touches and I'm going to try not to use my fingers anymore because my fingers are dirty and I don't want to uh, dirty the final look of this. So terrariums, they're very pretty and so we want to maintain that as much as we can. So I'm actually going to give it a top layer of sand. Okay, so I'm just going to carefully Spoon it out and I'll be able to spread it out a little bit. I'm just kind of starting up towards the base of the plant. I want to get it under all of the leaves. There's a little, uh, there's a little bit of new growth down coming from the bottom here. So I want to make sure that I'm going on underneath that and not, not mirroring it. And I want to go all the way around there. Making sure it goes all the way to the lip. That's why we didn't want the, uh, the, the potting mix to be going over the lip because then there'd be nothing to catch the sand as it falls down. So I'm going to keep doing that. Now it's looking really quite loaded, but I'm going to get a little bit of a bang to settle it. And I don't want to really add anything else to that now. And that is looking very nice indeed. So when I put the dome on that, that's going to be a lovely little terrarium. Look at that. We'll get a nice little bit of height there. This syngonium, because it doesn't have a lot more space, it's not going to get a lot taller and I can prune it back if I need to. Though I'll try to avoid that because um, pruning it will encourage more growth. But I, I found that in terrariums, uh, the Syngoniums especially don't need a lot of pruning. Uh, the ones that I've done uh, over a couple of years haven't needed a lot of maintenance at all. So we're just about there now. I need to water this. I don't want to overwater it because things will go bad. And because this is pretty well, it pretty well closes it. A little bit of moisture will escape through here and a little bit of moisture will go into, into the cells. But most of it will just come transpire up to the leaves, get caught on here and run back down. Uh, or uh, precipitate, kind of like rain, kind of, the same process. Um, so I'm going to water this out, but I don't want to ruin this lovely uh, sandy top layer that I've got here. So I'm going to use a dropper and I need to go and get that. So let me get that. To water this terrarium, I'm going to use a oral medicine dropper. So this is only five milliliters, so it's pretty small, but it'll allow me to be very precise with where I put the water. Uh, in the past, I have used a squirt bottle, but when you have a top layer like this, that spray, even though it's pretty fine, will disrupt it. So I don't want to actually touch the sand. So I'm going to be wanting to drop the water directly into the center of the plant. So now I'll just uh, squeeze it, Put in water so it fills up. And can't get any more. Let's try fill it away. There we go. So about five, I've got um, five milliliters there. And I'm gonna go pretty close to the base of the plant, as close to the center as I can, and I'm just gonna drop it in nice and slowly because I don't want it to run down the side of the hill that we've made. I just want it to go straight into the soil of the plant. And I can actually see the uh, the water trickling down, as in the sand is absorbing it a little bit, so the sand is getting wet. But the benefit of doing this is that I'm not disrupting it at all. I'm not uh, agitating it. I'm not 
just I'm not making it move, I'm not giving it like the, the pattern that you would if you use a sprayer. Alright, I'm noticing that there's a bit of water, a few water droplets coming around the outside now, which uh, tells me I've certainly got enough. I may have actually overwatered a little bit. If I'm noticing signs of overwatering, whether it be uh, signs of root rot or uh, more likely from this one, mold, I will just take the lid off, the dome off for a, a while and for it to dry out a little bit um, because at the moment all the water is going to be contained in this little ecosystem. And there we have our terrarium, which and I know the parts in here would have cost money, but um, because I used such small amounts and because they were also not very expensive, really, uh, this, this would cost comfortably less than 10 Australian dollars. And it's really, really lovely. Now I'm gonna find a lovely, shady spot for this one inside with that gets no direct sunlight because if it gets any direct sunlight it's just going to kill this thing almost immediately it's very it glass it just captures the heat really well and it'll just dry this thing out really quickly and kill it we've done that with a few terrariums we made them as, we, we learned very early that they need to go where they get no direct sunlight so i'll be putting this on our shelf with the rest of the with a few of our other terrariums and this one this one can get a fair bit of sun so i'm going to go and water this one now and i'm going to find a place for this one to live And that is all for this 2020 under 20 video. Thank you very much, Pam, for coming up with this idea. At the end of this video, I have got a link to the playlist of a number of us plant tubers doing this similar challenge, if you will. So thank you very much for watching. If you haven't already subscribed to Scott Bros and Avocado Tree, please do. Thank you very much for making it to the end of the video. I'd love to know what you thought about it. And I will see you in my next video. You're a curious boy, aren't you? No, please don't try to eat that. No, you can't. You want to drink out of it though? Because huh? <laughs> what is this? Boop. Boop. <laughs> no, I don't think so. <laughs> Scott grows an avocado tree. <laughs> Scott grows an avocado tree. <laughs> Scott. Grows an avocado tree, Scott grows an avocado tree.